I grew up in L.A. in the 60s, and we were pretty hard hit by smog. I remember days when we had play inside days because we couldn't go out on the playground. I can actually remember early in my career spending time on the job out here in Los Angeles and having routinely to uh, deal with smog alerts where it was recommended that you stay indoors. In the afternoons, you would see this bank of what looked like fog coming in from the west to Riverside. That wasn't fog, it was pollution. I remember hiking in Griffith Park and looking out at the sunset in LA. It was not pretty. From our earliest years, we've been very focused on racing. What racing teaches you is to fight for fair rules. And we took that attitude right from Formula One into our efforts at the environment. I think today people take for granted uh, clean air. If you look back to 1970s, there was a large a social issue, a public debate that was taking place. The big result of the concern about air quality was of course, the Clean Air Act. And you had a lot of auto companies that opposed it and said it couldn't be done. The number of companies that were actually proactive were very few. Honda was one of those companies. Honda had a positive attitude towards these new regulations. We'll compete and we'll win. During the regulatory process, we were saying, well, Honda can do this. Why can't others do it? One example of their technological leadership and environmental stewardship was uh, the development of the CVCC engine technology. When the CVCC team was thinking about these early challenges, Blue Skies for Our Children was the best rallying cry possible. It kept everybody focused on the ultimate goal. I think Honda keeps this focus on the technology and it demonstrates what can be done. Here was this little company that defied the odds and was able to meet the regulations. Undeniably, California in the early years exhibited leadership in addressing automobile emissions. In 1990, California passed the low emission vehicle regulations. They cut tailpipe emissions dramatically. To give you an image, low emission vehicles cut emissions by 30%, and ultra-low emissions cut them even further. We were the first company to develop and market a low emission vehicle in 96, an ultra-low emission vehicle in 98, a super ultra-low emission or SULEV vehicle in 2000. And in 2013, we introduced the world's first SULEV 20, the most stringent emission standard to date. Honda was an early adopter of those standards. They were proud of their environmental achievements and took a leadership role in meeting those standards. They embraced those standards. So there's been substantial reductions in automotive pollutants to the point where they're near zero emissions for a new car. Unlike racing, the environmental challenge never has a finish line. In the last 40 years, I think we've made the world a much better place. The incidence of smog is greatly reduced, and on an individual vehicle level, the emissions are one one-thousandth of what they were from pre-regulated days. Is the job done? Absolutely not. There's still work to be done. The next challenge is addressing greenhouse gas emissions. I would say that is a major challenge for the industry. The new race is now to reduce greenhouse gases. We want to develop next generations of vehicles that will have that equivalent leap forward on climate change in the next 40 years as we've had on air quality in the last 40.